You are looking at remote storage blueprint connected to a train network. When I select required material in my priority power switch list, this material starts to load into the train from my personal storage factory. Then, train makes item delivery at remote storage units all over the map. There could be several remote storage units and they also can be turned on and off remotely. So, you can order required items from anywhere on the map to any number of remote storage units. The whole system is fully modular and blueprint based. It is designed to work with my personal storage factory, the factory that is also fully modular and blueprint based. And if that was not enough, this system is fully compatible with drones. While drones deliver a fraction of items per run compared to trains, drones do not require rail connection. Today in this video, I would cover underlying principles behind this satisfactory system. This is very advanced blueprint setup, so feel free to use YouTube chapters. First, I would explain simple on and off sorting logic with priority power switch. Then, I would dive deep into extra logic involving two methods of transport and multitude of remote storage units. And finally, I would also explain how to set up my blueprints in the game. My fellow gamers, as always, my satisfactory blueprints are free. Check out the pinned comment under this video. No strings attached. Comment, like, share and become a YouTube member out of your free will. The idea of remote storage is not something new. But remote storage became way more effective with the introduction of priority power switch in Satisfactory Update 8. I couldn't really pinpoint who came up with the idea first, but I was introduced to this updated idea on Construction Channel. Really awesome Satisfactory creator and a decent human being. Although we have different opinions on some aspects of Satisfactory community, Construction does not intimidate me with an imaginary lawsuit. <laughs> Alright. Construction remote storage system use smelters and priority power switches to sort items into transportation network. This system place smelters and iron ore on the same item belt between factory and transportation network. Before smelters, you place smart splitter to split iron ore from the main item. When you enable smelter with priority power switch, your main item start to flow into transportation network. When you disable smelter with priority power switch, iron ore clog up the smart splitter and produced item stop its flow. As a result, item does not reach the transportation network. Quite ingenious design. But we can have several improvements over this design. Connecting iron ore to every sorting facility is a bit redundant and restrictive. Also, this leads to unnecessary addition of awesome things to remove produced iron ingots. If you ever done diluted fuel setup for fuel generators, you are probably familiar with packaged water loops. In those loops, you just pack and unpack water canisters with packagers indefinitely. While those loops have canisters on closed internal and infinite loop, water is an external source. But for our purpose, we can make both water and canisters as internal closed loop. So instead of iron ore, we can clog up the sorting system with packaged water canisters. We just pack and unpack water indefinitely with two packagers. But this system also have an issue. It turns out I usually do not have packaged water in my inventory. Like yeah, because there's no reason to have packaged water in inventory. Why you will have water on your inventory? I don't know. We need to connect water to the system first, thus we are defeating any advantage we can gain from removing iron ore and extra connection. This is still a connection. But what I actually have in my inventory are packaged liquid biofuel and packaged turbo fuel canisters. I produce those items in my modular storage factory and I use those fuel types with my personal jetpack all the time. And I can make blueprint with inserted packaged liquid biofuel into closed internal loop. So when I erect sorting system blueprint, I do not need to make any water or fuel connections, I just need to have packaged liquid biofuel in my inventory. Packaged liquid biofuel works in the same manner as water with two packagers. I connect two packagers to priority power switch and can clog up smart splitter with a flip of a toggle in priority power switch menu. Note that you can access this priority power switch menu anywhere on the map with any other priority power switch even without power. Quite the powerful tool. Alright. Now let's see how we can retrofit my modular blueprint storage with this extra system. 
First, I have made closed loop with 25 packaged liquid biofuel on board. This is compact template for two packagers with infinite loop sitting on separate power chain with priority power switch. There is one merger, to merge canisters and any undefined item. And there is a smart splitter, splitting any undefined item from the loop. In this manner, I can easily fit up to 8 loops for 8 items in one 4x4 blueprint. Nevertheless, since I'm working with my modular storage, I only really need to work with up to 12 items at the same time. So, my technical goal here is to make universal modules handling 6 items each. And this module also should be stacked vertically 2 times for a total of 12 items. Since I have some spare room in the blueprint, I also added extra industrial storage container in front of the system to function as extra storage buffer. So, for my full personal factory I just want to have 5 sorting stacks and they can be easily aligned to existing factory modules. Only things that I need to connect are storage containers in my modular factory and storage containers in my blueprint sorters. So, after items get into sorting blueprints, they either go or do not go into train station depending on the state of each individual priority switch. 5 modules connect to 5 train cars with 5 freight platforms. Pretty straightforward. Notice that I'm not using extra module for my bio-waste processing unit and I feel like this is just an overkill and I prefer to use remote factories for that instead of remote orders. Alright, now there is one issue and several challenges with this setup. I have done manifold design for 12 items in every single module. So, if we would order more than 2 items at the same time from one module, we are getting diminishing quantities in 3rd, 4th and so on items. While you can totally fit load balancing in such a system, I just do not see reason for such an excess. The whole system is about ordering several missing items remotely rather than trying to make full storage everywhere on the map. For the full storage you can just make an extra full factory instead of like bottlenecked logistics. Also remember that with 5 separate modules you can order up to 10 items out of total 50 without diminishing throughput on the train network. So frankly I have no will to make a dozen mergers and extra spaghetti for something I do not really need. But what I actually need are the drones. Alright, there are two ways of doing things. There is the first way where you just make separate system for drones and second way where you just pretend to be a math scientist and implement a bunch of newly found logic into already complex system. Guess what I have chosen? Alright. I want to use my sorters for trains as the sorters for drones at the same time. And since we can make on-off switch, I just added priority switch for drones and trains. I only need two per module right after I merge all the items for delivery. So first, items go to the drone smart splitter where we have additional overflow setting. If priority switch for drones is off, then system clock and items overflow into the train network. If priority switch for the trains is off, then items stop its flow entirely. Last bit seems a bit unnecessary, but if you have no switch for the trains, then this overflow from drones would always go into the train network and spread around all the stations for no reason. After all, it is just a bunch of unnecessary items traveling around the map and since drone capacity is quite low, accidental overflow would be a thing. Alright, next challenge with drones is to power them up with batteries. I can separate batteries from one of my personal storage modules with a smart splitter. But since I was making a universal blueprint in its core, I had no idea from what side and where batteries would go. So I just made batteries loop that can connect to any number of modules and spread through any number of drone ports. So the full setup for the central sorting facility looks like this. You plop 10 sorting modules in 5 stacks. Then you connect personal storage factory and sorting modules container to container. I'm using foundation layer to cover all the spaghetti. 6 items on each stack goes up to the second blueprint via conveyor lifts. And then there is conveyor lift connection for drones and trains. All the items always goes up to the drones and then go down to trains. If you are using only trains then you can loop those connections into the train only half loop. After this point you can rename all the priority switches to correspond to items on the belts. Then you make the train station with 5 train freight platforms and connect every platform to one of the modules. If you want to add drones to the system, you just put the drone module on top of every module. You connect in and out with two lifts and connect battery loop with even more conveyor lifts on the roof. And as usual, do not forget to connect power. Alright, this is only setup to send items. Now let's talk about receiving end and even more challenges to tackle. 
First, we need the way to sort bunch of items we are receiving into separate storage containers. And this dictates the shape of the blueprint quite a lot. There are a total of 50 containers to tackle and I went with smaller containers for modules E and F where I have late game items and ammo. Since there are 5 train cars with 5 different sets of items, I just made 5 rows with 6 smart pleaters to separate corresponding items into designated containers. As you can imagine, in this fashion, there is no need for programmable splitters. But there is minor inconvenience with the smart splitters. Eventually, this system would clog up when one of containers is full. And for this case, I just made overflow protection blueprint that is basically awesome sync with 5 murders to search and destroy overflow on every row. If you are ordering items in small quantities, you do not really need this functionality. But if you go all in, you just place this module and connect 5 extra belts with power. Next module is simple set of stairs. Quite handy while you are missing hover pack. Or should I call it legdy? You know, like handy legdy? You know, stairs? Anyone? In true KSP fashion, it is called Remote Storage Mobility Enhancer. And then we have an issue while operating several remote storage units on the train network. I prefer to order my trains to stop on every single stop rather than to try having several trains for each individual remote storage and stop. By the default, when you order item with priority power switch, it would offload on the first train station. Considering previously mentioned overflow protection, second station in the chain highly unlikely to receive any items at all. We can't really remotely disable train stations and we cannot disable the belts. This is why once again we are using yet another setup with priority power switch and a bunch of packagers. Only difference here is only one power switch for a total of 5 belts and 10 packagers. So in this manner we can disable any remote storage unit with flip of a single toggle in priority power our switch menu. We do not really need this functionality for the drone since you order individual drone ports to deliver items between each other. And for the drones, once again I made this gorgeous extension on the roof. Unlike trains, I do not have like 5 separate lines, so this is the first time when I am using programmable splitter over the smart splitters. There is space to make like 25 or even 50 smart splitters, but I was too lazy and just plopped manifold with 5 programmable switches and allied those with existing inputs for my remote storage blueprint. And obviously this will not work at the same time with the train connection, but I see no real needs for that extra functionality. There are several tips for operating this system. I retain letter naming scheme from my personal storage factory, so every item and the drone port have the letter of the module in the name, and in this manner I always know what drone port can deliver what items, so I do not really need to have any notes for the drone remote orders. Another tip is that you can add extra factories to your item production. My modular personal storage factory produces only limited amount of steel and concrete. And I'm using too much of both materials for my blueprints. Like 1k concrete and 2k steel becomes a norm for my blueprints at this point. So yeah, I need a lot of concrete and a lot of steel. So I'm thinking about just making two dedicated blueprint factories with extra production and just insert those extra items on the belts. And maybe even I would go as far as making separate storage container in my modules with less than 12 items to boost throughput of steel and concrete in logistics network. All blueprints are available in the pin comment down below for free. If you found this video very intriguing, I bet you would like my video about pushing Blueprint Factory to its physical limits. And if you like more traditional use of Blueprint Designer, you can always check out my video for Blueprint Module Railway Supports. Thank you very much for watching and a huge thanks for all YouTube members supporting my highly specialized craft. Have a nice one and Yakis out!